Hello everyone and welcome back to the next instalment of our van build. Previously we finished building our pull out bed and new shaped bench unit and we're really happy with the results. But honestly, even if we hated it, there's only so many times you can place and screw slats in. Three times was our limit. In this episode we make a start on another big task. So today we're building a kitchen cabinet. We have no clue what we're doing. So now we cut it two pieces. Uh, two side pieces, just need to scribe the back to the shape of the side wall. Yeah, the wall is very like... It's not straight at all. Yeah, no. I think there's not a single straight line in this land, to be honest. I think the lower half, it's not too bad, but from here upwards, it's all just curved, which is going to make this a little bit trickier. But we have scribed before. Yeah, so I think... So we kind of know what we're doing this time. It's going to be easy, so let's scribe this one. Wait, um, you said the wrong word there, you just said it's going to be easy. You stick to just right we measured and cut the two side panels, scribing them to the shape of our seriously wonky walls. We then fitted the bottom front beam to support the side for structural integrity. This will also act as our kick plate. Now time for the rear beam and top beams. And voila, the main box shape of our kitchen unit complete. We squeezed in as much as we could on the kitchen, decided to start the tricky bits next weekend when we could dedicate a bit more time to it. Um, today's job is to try and finish the kitchen unit. We didn't make as much progress as we wanted to last weekend, did we? No, it was very slow. It was a like slow day. day. We had visitors, which was lovely, but it does kind of delay what we need to get done. So it was just a bit hit and miss last weekend. However, I did break the bed. And we didn't quite it on camera. Whilst proudly showing off our handiwork to family, I very confidently sat down on the bed to show everyone how durable it was to hear in a mighty crack. Yep, I broke the bed in front of an audience. How embarrassing. That was not gonna hold a soul, was it? Look at that. So I replicated the slat. So I'm gonna stain this one. And while this one's drying, I'm gonna remove the end one on the bed because it's really rubbing up against the kitchen unit so we just need to take a tiny bit off of the edge of it hopefully just to stop it from rubbing because no one needs to hear that sound every night when they're making the bed so while somebody doing her repair on the bed i need to start to build the drawers and um and the sliding bits for for, for the kitchen unit. What we're thinking of doing is this option. So we want a, a pull-out drawer where we're gonna have a, a cool box above there. We want a drawer, a one pull-out drawer in the middle and a couple of drawers on the side. So now I need to figure out how I'm gonna make this sliding fridge drawer. I need to finish this bottom kick plate and then we can start building the actual front frame. I have no idea what I'm doing. Fish me luck. So I have successfully repaired two slats. I bet you can't tell which ones I've repaired. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a fully functioning bed that now doesn't scrape the kitchen, doesn't scrape the back bench, and doesn't have a broken slat. Just looks a bit different, but that's fine. It's really no problem, is it? What's the problem? Exactly, what problem? What are you talking about? They're all exactly the same. Silly, silly billies. Repairs complete, it was time to start building the kitchen drawers. This part took us a while as a lot of it was trial and error. It needed to be flush, the rails needed to be level, and it had to slide. And as previously, we are usually far too confident and then always make a mistake. As we've previously mentioned, we have been incredibly lucky with supplies. My uncle and auntie had some leftover chipboard from their new furniture and it was up for grabs. It was a perfect material with a nice top coat prep for paint. This saved us a lot of time and a lot of money. We started on the drawer for our core box. This ended up being pretty simple. Ta-da! Aris's bed. What? My bed. My bed. So that's going to be our fridge drawer. drawer. Oh. The bee's back. He's always coming here. We always have a bee visiting us. Every time we're here, there's a bee. Do you think it's the same bee? <laughs> it's Bertram, then. Bertram. Bertram the bee. Anywho. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now. Do we need the back piece on that? If you wanted to, we could put a short back piece on, just in case it slides. Yeah, we might need to cut this bit, and then we just need to figure out the, the measurements and fit the rails. Oh, so we've cocked up the first uh, attempt of our draw. Yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. 
because the front uh, piece wasn't cut to the right size. So we scrapped that uh, front piece at the moment and we fitted the runners. So we're gonna attempt to fit it and see if it actually fit and slide in and out. And after that, if everything's okay, we can just cut the front piece. not flush flush it. On this side it would need to come out a bit more. Uh, I don't know, is it because where the bottom maybe sits a bit lower? It functions, so it should be. Well, just because we had to take the, the draw from the runners, I thought, well, we might as well just raise the back mm. and... Yeah, so it was that probably wasn't very level. It's good now. So once that was done, we moved on to building the middle drawer. This one took a little bit more time as we had a very specific design in mind. We had hoped to complete the kitchen in one day. We really do like to set ourselves up for disappointment, don't we? Two drawers done and we left it there. Yeah, so we, we, we almost got a kitchen. We have. It, it's been a really long and slow, it's a very slow process because we're kind of working on it and learning, thinking about all the options and all, all the possible ways and all the stuff. And, and then it, that, and like doing it and then realizing that it's yeah, not quite right. You forgot it something again. and it just takes time. I think it takes a lot of time just to measure it because the amount of times we've measured something and about to cut it and then we're like, oh, hold on a minute, actually, that's not gonna work. Yeah. But yeah, what well, that's, that's today's Ignore progress. This side. Yeah, this th side is just there for show at the moment, just so we can figure something out. But just pretend yeah. that's not there. Yeah, you can imagine that. So this part, as you saw already, is a sliding bit where the cool box is going to go in. This middle bit is going to be exactly the same sliding part, which is going to have bottles, bottle, cans, and other stuff rack and. This piece we just placed there just to imagine how it would look like, but basically it would be a door. So we could. might get one drawer above it. So yeah, it's going to be a cupboard door for the water containers. Isn't it? Yeah. Then hopefully one, maybe two drawers, then the sink, but it just depends on the depth of the sink. But we don't need a deep sink either. We need to figure that out next time though. I so. think we need to get clearing up now and think about heading home. Yeah, that'll do for today. See you next day. So, it's another day and we've got some more welding to do. As her MOT was growing ever closer, it was time to get her up to scratch so she can sail through it. Arama spent most of the day welding and patching up the last few spots of rust. I wouldn't have been much help on this bit, so I left Arama to it. After hours of welding. But I'm glad to say I'm almost done. To be honest, I said almost done. I think I'm pretty much done welding now. It's been a long day. Oh my god, look at the stain on me. Everything is welded seam sealed some bits ready to be sanded and uh, painted so that just needs painting and I just finished on the, the right side so I'm done for today the following day we were both back on the job during the week we had finally chosen a paint color that we loved I tested the colour on the wood to make sure it was perfect. We ended up buying some more paint because the previous paint colour looked like this, which was just not quite the right green. So the one we went for was the Dunelm Eggshell Emulsion, which is in bottle green. Um, and actually, I've just done like the first single coat on both of the back sliding panels and it is almost exactly the colour that well, I in particular was looking for. That's just one coat and I just think it's the loveliest kind of 
foresty green. But I'm gonna do another coat now and see what two coats look like. As soon as we knew it was right, I cracked on with painting the rear sliding doors and the drawers that we had made already. Aramis crept on completing another drawer and placing the runners, and the sun began to set. It was time to head home. It's quite late, as you can see, and um, it's been a busy day. We've got top drawer, which is... Nice and big. Oh. Give me a second. Hopefully that still works on the rails, because I did paint the rails ever so slightly. Love that colour. That might be my paint for now, to be fair. Well done. Yeah. Um, it's quite dark. We probably barely can see it, but we got half of the kitchen. I'm so pleased with that colour. Another week has passed and we have a lot to do. Good morning. Not busy. Hello. We are straight to the action. Today's plan is uh, paint all underneath of the van. So we've got quite a lot to do actually. Our Flossie has the Ford Transit bug, or rust as it's better known so he wanted to prevent this returning for as long as possible. Time to underseal her underbody. This job was satisfying and gross all at the same time. We started by removing all the dirt and old paint to make sure she was as clean as possible. Aramis got on with that whilst I made a start sealing the wheel arches. So I've been using this hammerite paint and I've kind of covered as much of here as I can. It's really hard to work with, it's quite sticky. I mean, it is handy though, because it doesn't drip when you're doing up underneath that much, to be honest, but that's one side down. I'd done my wheel arches, and the next time I saw Aramis, he looked like he'd been down a mining shaft. He probably scrubbed dirt off from over 10 years ago, and now splattered all over his face. Nuts. The state of our faces. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? By a transit, they say. This is the absolute mess of a job. Look at this. Apparently I have a big blob on my face. Oh yeah, yeah I can see it. And my hands have just been in the paint. I'm just chilling here. <laughs> this thing is nasty. It trips on your face. Everything's sticky. Nice. Yeah. And then it's going to be worth it. Ten hours later and two dirty faces after. I said we'll get here early. I want to go by five. It's now probably about seven o'clock. Let's just do a little tour of all of the under sealant that is really hard to get off. We've got a little patch behind the ear here. And this lovely, my favorite, I think, this lovely perfect circle just here. I had a very big one here now. You can actually see there where, oh my mm. God, you can see where it's been rubbed off, like the thick layer of dirt you've got. But underbody. Looks pretty now. You best do after 10 hours. I mean, we've still got the back section where the spare wheel sits to do that, but it's probably going to take an hour next time. And that's done, ready for our tea. And that's all for this video. Come back next time to see how we get on with the final MOT prep. We have three days to get her fully ready, but will she be ready in time? Stay tuned to find out. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this patchwork episode. Let us know what you think of the build so far in the comments. As always, your support and well wishes mean the world to us. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Take a Peek at This for extra little updates as we go. See you next time. Bye.